Hello soon to be amazing. Hello soon to be amazing hackers. Hope you're all doing well today. So I think you came to this video to know how to become a hacker in a year. Well I'm going to try and compress it as good as possible. But of course, we all know that you have to do your own research and you have to be diligent about what you do, what you read, what you find online, all the information. You really have to check it for yourself. And of course, nothing comes without effort. It's going to take quite a lot of effort, to be honest. Uh, I became a hacker. I I didn't have any hacking experience until I uh, until I did my OSCP. But I just learned OSCP in about three or four months, and then I passed the exam. So you can become a hacker in a year if you really put your mind to it and if you have some basic knowledge. But let's get right into this video, shall we? Because there's also an article connected to this video. You can find it in the link in the description below. And this specific article is on honeypot.io. I love those guys. Make sure you visit. They have a lot of things in here. Uh, like uh, some read some originals, real documentaries about Vue.js, for example, GraphQL. Really, really useful as a hacker, that GraphQL documentary. But let's get back to the video, shall we? By the way, this video is not sponsored by them. <laughs> I just really liked them. Um, what is a hacker for me? That's really important that we first define this because, of course, if you want to be a hacker, you need to know what a hacker is. Otherwise, there's no way you can be a hacker. So for me, in my opinion, hackers they're very creative people and I don't mean this in a, in a literal sense that they're going to make paintings and that they're going to make music and all of that stuff of course that's possible but what we, we always try to do is we always think about the world in different ways in my opinion we try to see how we can make things work in a different way that profits us that's good for us that's something that I think is a good trait that a lot of hackers have. And I've seen it actually in most of the hackers. I haven't seen one of them that's not curious, um, that's not able to be creative when it comes down to it. Because also, it's really important that when you have an exploit in front of you and you're not able to use it properly, uh, maybe you need to change something. You need to start getting creative and think about all of the ways that you can try and change that specific exploit. So very important that you really are creative, um, not in a graphics artist kind of way. Of course, that's uh, also good, but real outside of the box thinking, that's something that's often required when we encounter one of these issues. Uh, when I did my OSCP, of course, OSCP is going to make it so that you find your exploits online, but your exploits are not going to work immediately. And you have to think, okay, so what system am I running this against? And how can I hack this system with the exploit that I have in front of me? My exploit, for example, might be a Windows exploit, but I might need a Linux exploit. Well, then I might need to get a little bit creative and change that exploit to what I need. That all comes down to the next part as well, which is solving problems. Because for me, all of this hacking stuff, when all of it comes together, like these articles, for example, as well, it's just building something beautiful. And then when you finally get to execute it, when you finally have this finished product, this exploit that works, that's when, for me, I get a huge adrenaline rush, you know? It's like, oh my god, cool, I got my exploit to work, and especially in bug bounties, it's like, wow, so many people have tested this target before me, and I am the first one to find this exploit that gives a really good adrenaline rush, and I love solving those problems, because when something, like again, when I run a good and Windows exploit against the Linux machine, I really need to be able to solve my issue there. And it's not just that uh, simple always. It's not always the operating system that doesn't work. Maybe um, there's something encoded in the exploit. Well, then if it's encoded, you might have to decode it. But that's something you really need to think about. And you really need to solve that trail of problems. I've seen this time and time again because a lot of hackers really enjoy my free laboratories. Um, if you want to have a look, and the, they'll be in the description below as well. But they, I don't know why, they are like puzzles. And a lot of people like in hacking community like to do CTFs as well and hack the box as well. All of these things are centered around solving problems. So 
it's really important that you like that. If you don't like solving problems, if you somebody who just prefers to do things like, uh, for example, I don't know, if you like to do some repetitive work, there's nothing wrong with that. But hacking is not repetitive work at all, in my opinion. So we also, as hackers, this comes into the next point as well. It's very important to fight the established order. And I don't mean anarchy, burn every city down, go to the town hall and lynch somebody. No, that's not what I mean at all. What I mean is that for me, you guys have to trust but verify. I have to trust but verify. I trust my mentors and I trust my gurus, but every word that comes out of their mouth, I verify it. Because I want to not just make sure that they, like for example, me as well, I can make a mistake. I am human. Every human can make a mistake. It's kind of uh, in our nature to make mistakes. And that's a good thing as well. A little side note, you would really need to learn how to accept failure and run with it as experience instead of failure. That's something that's very important. So for established order fighting, just make sure that you question everything, even me. And when I say something, go look it up, think about it. It's the truth what the rat says, because truth is a very, um, it's a subjective understanding. Like your truth can be a little bit different from my truth. And that's something that I want to bring forward is that we don't have to all think the same way as long as we all understand each other. That's something that's very important. Now, we are very competent usually. And what I mean by that is, well, like I said, we need to analyze our exploits often, but we really do need to have a good basic understanding of IT systems in general, not just how a server works, but also how its different servers can be connected, what a load balancer is, what a what a web, web application firewall is. There's so many different configurations like IDS, IPS, there's new things coming out all of the time. And we need to keep up, we need to pursue that thirst for knowledge and we need to really make sure that we have a lot of disciplines that we can fall back on because it, often if you look at a ctf player they will have many different things that they know like sonography they might know xxc they might know xxs there's many different things out there um but to know to get to that level you need to have a really good basic understanding of what's going on in a system of networks or if you want to hack for example hardware you really need to understand what's going on with that hardware when you press the power button so that's what i mean by hackers have to be very competent in my opinion now that's some basics about hacking about who a hacker is what a hacker does how he feels I think we it's important to also give you guys some general steps because now you might have decided okay I want this I want to become a hacker Uncle Red how do I do it first of all programming is really important don't skip this step because programming will teach you the basics and I started out with HTML because it's very simple I know it's not a strict programming language to be honest but I don't I don't really care um, it's also not really applicable to hacking but what it'll do is it'll give you like a foothold it'll give you a step in the door and it'll teach you how to write a website that's something that's really important to add some css make your page sign even make them responsive as possible um and then maybe eat some add some javascript later on eat come on uh so php php uh, that's something that makes your website dynamic and that's something that I would recommend. A lot of people would recommend against PHP because I know it's a vulnerable app, web app language. There are many vulnerabilities that can be found in there, but still, uh, and also just technically, some people are against PHP, but I really like it because it's pretty simple. Um, it will be easy to work with. I create all of my labs in PHP because I really like it. It's a really good language. Um, you can do ASPX as well if you really don't want to do PHP. But PHP have, has a big tolerance for error, so um, that's why I really like it. And Python, that's just a generalist language. Anything you can do with Python, anything you can think of. Uh, on a computer you can probably automate it with python there are fifty thousand different modules with python available 
it will really help you in automating your uh, hacking tasks now bash is not in here i forgot for, uh, i think it's later on or either that or i forgot to add it but bash is also pretty important to learn i think you also learn that when you learn linux of course bash is included in there that's very important uh, and linux it's really important that you know thoroughly how linux works not just a simple understanding of okay this is how i uh, move a file this is how i copy a file all of that is good and well um, but if you really want to work with it you're going to have to learn about the architecture a little bit as well and um, that's a little bit important for me why because again if you want to properly hack something you're going to have to know all of the options of your tool you're going to have to know how your tools work and often it's an um, understanding of how these tools interact with your target application but also how you start them up on your own linux machine uh, sometimes these tools attack a different layer uh, of the oz model um, sometimes these tools um, well you get the point let's move on to the next one it's really important as well that you understand the basics of networking and i really wouldn't skip this step either because again all of these different networking techniques will learn you um, the vulnerability types like ssrf and if you ever want to do bug bounties you're going to have to be better than everybody else so that means that you really need to do some um, just, you really need to know your stuff that's why it's really important for me that you're comfortable with learning with doing the basics of networking now i don't mean you need to be extremely well familiarized with every part of a network no what i mean is you need to be able to run an nmap scan and interpret the results you need to be able to know how uh, servers are running with each other how they communicate with each other via json xml files so that's really important you really need to have a good understanding of the basics of hacking now um networking i mean excuse me now the next thing you can really do is you can read articles on hacking as well because if you know your vulnerabilities a little bit if you want to get into it but you're wondering okay what exactly am i looking for and how do i look for it well that might help to read articles on hacking you have things like activities cves available um, whatever there are many many different blogs available that describe how they find the vulnerabilities on medium as well so there's definitely a great resource pool available for hacking and learning how to hack and i think the most the best way to do that is to look at how other people did it before so that's why i recommend reading a lot of articles but it's also important that you choose your specialization because in hacking there are many different types of hackers as well it may not seem that important but the type of hacker determines what you are going to hack am i going to hack web applications that might seem like a narrow field but i can assure you there are many many different things we can hack in web applications so that's definitely something a plus some uh, basics like xxe xxs but also insecure deserialization os command injection so there's definitely some cool stuff to be had over there now you can also do network hacking by the way these are not exclusive you can do all of these combined if you really want you can combine one with the other you combine several with each other it, it's not mutually exclusive uh, as for network hacking a great basis there is cisco ccna um, because it will teach you everything you need to know about the network like the oz model how a network communicates with each other via packets how to analyze those packets and all that stuff um, and in a in a computer software emulation i shall say that actually works pretty good in my opinion so that's why i recommend ccna but of course you can also do hack the box vuln hub it really depends so um one of the things that i did was i practiced a lot on hack the box uh sorry i went to my oscp i think i told you guys this before i went into my oscp then i practiced a lot on hack the box when my time went over my lab time and then i went over and i did my exam um you can also have a certificate such as 
ChatGPT, that's something you can go for as well. But I'm not sure how it works now these days because it used to be really simple. You just signed up for the certification, you signed up for the course and done. But now you have to sign up for all of the courses that are in, in some bundle and ChatGPT is included or something. I don't know precisely, but it's not my forte um, and I don't really like it. As for malware analysis, that's also something that you can do and it might seem a bit daunting, but everything seems daunting if you don't know what it is. Everything seems like, whoa, that's super overwhelming. But if you really think about it, go into the details and break things down, it might become a lot simpler than you had in mind at first sight. But of course, you will not need to find a good resource on it, which is not that easy. So, guys and gals, of course, as a conclusion from all of this, what I really want you to take away is that hacking is really, uh, like, it's not simple. You have to be knowledgeable in different aspects. Um, you have to be, um, like we said before, it's really important that we are very creative we keep on learning forever. That's something that is in our book. We have to keep on doing that. Now, the thing is, keep on learning. Um, the, all of that is stressful, but it brings extreme joy when all of the puzzle pieces fall into place, when everything works, when exploit is done, and when you pop that reverse shell, you're very happy when you go to bed. So for me, it's all worth it. And all of these things, I actually enjoy doing them. I enjoy learning constantly. And the mindset I try to give myself is to keep on learning eternally. And even if it's just one small thing a day, that's what helps keep me going. So if you want to know how to become a good hacker in a year, well, a good hacker is something somebody that puts in extreme amounts of time that works very hard for the goal they want to achieve somebody that is creative somebody that loves to solve problems and somebody that let's go back here so as you can see creative solve problems establish order fighting something that we all sh always should question our gurus and we are very competent that's something that is really important now I am sure that in less than a year, I'm going to see a, a thousand new amazing hackers with their certificates. So I wish you all extreme luck if you're going for a certificate or doing an exam right now. You got this. Keep on going. Just look at your book and stop watching my videos until you've done your exam and until you've done your certification. I demand it or I demand cheese. Thank you very much, amazing hackers, and I hope you. I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.